tell me there's not a better way to end the day than lollies. And I'm going to show you how to make this kick-ass little lolly dispenser. I'm actually going to show you two versions. Depending on the gear you've got at school or home, depending on the age of your kids, we'll decide which one you choose. One's pretty basic, and this one's a little bit, got a few more techniques to it. But they're both fantastic. I think that's it. Let's get into it. Sawdust and chrome, let's go. Oh yeah. Who doesn't love Skittles? Sawdust and chrome. Sawdust and chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> G'day guys, Moose here, and this, I know I say it every time, but this is actually one of the favorites we do here at school. I've been doing it for a little while, and all the kids love it, parents love it, and it's got lollies, you can't, can't lose. And what I love from a teaching point of view, and you guys will in your workshops, is it's just from scrap. Everyone's got scrap timber, so it's super easy. Um, costs virtually anything. Actually, the most you're gonna spend, and please do it, is go grab one of these jars. It's a mason jam preserving jar thing. The key is the lid. Normal jar. But it's one of those lids that separate. That's the key, that's what we want. Because I don't need this guy. We need this one, a nice neat little kind of lid. So later on down the track, it makes your job so much easier. So grab one of these. Oh, plans have been provided for you guys. And like I said in the intro, which one you do depends on how big or little your kids are and the equipment you've got there at your workshops or at school. Um, I think that's it. Please, don't forget to spread the word, do the likes, comments, and um, make sure you subscribe. I don't want you guys to miss out anything. I think that's it. Let's get cracking. All right, now you've got to decide which one you want to do. If you want to do this guy, it's nice and simple, big block, but the key is you need some equipment that's going to be able to bore a hole through this for you. So here at school, we've got a mortiser, which is what we're going to use. It's going to bore a hole through here. I'm going to show you how to use it correctly. Um, we do it so it's just enough for our slide to fit through. Then in our slide, so we're going to bore through that one. In our slide, we'll do the cutout. And we're going to make sure our hole in the top punches through into our board up, our hole that we've bored and it matches our indentation. So our lollies can escape. So this one you need a little bit of machinery. For this guy, uh, you just cut your components to the size you need. We have a base. These are our two outside bits. So these are cut into threes, nice even thirds. These two outside bits are the 30 by 90s to match our 90 by 90s. So they're gonna be glued Nailed and glued, our slide is going to work through the centre. We're going to tweak it a tiny bit so it's a fraction smaller than it is, so it doesn't catch. In our slide, we'll do the indentation, same as this. Both of them will have the dowel, so we can't lose them. And then in the top of this guy, we bore the hole. So that one obviously goes all the way through, so our lollies can escape into our slide, and then they can drop out. So materials, sorry, equipment wise, this one's kind of glued, nailed, depending on what you've got at home, you've got to do your little trench, um, we'll probably bandsaw it or file it. This one, you need a little bit more machinery, um, this is what we use at school, because we can, we've got the gear. Um, so, depending on what you got, you decide which one you want to do. And jar-wise, it doesn't matter, they're both the same. I think that's enough chat, let's go. All right, first job, super easy. I've got my top and I've got my block. Uh, easiest way to find the centre on any kind of square or rectangle block is diagonals. 
draw a line across the diagonals. So I've got one there. Easy. Let's do the block first. If this is your first time on the drill press, please check out my safety video. Um, just got some nice safety tips to keep you out of harm's way. So, because it's a bigger block, I'm gonna use the clamp. When I do this guy, I should be able to hold it, and obviously depending on the age of your kids, clamp it, adult maybe has to hold it. I've set the depth stop to stop halfway. I've got to punch through this halfway. When we do this guy, that's why I've got the piece of scrap, because we want to look after it. We've got to go all the way through this. So, PPE, don't forget, ever. So, nice top and a nice bottom edge to it because we used a piece of scrap. That's literally all we need to do here. Easy, let's go, next step. We're killing it. My idea is if we use the same bit and we drill down into our slide as deep as we can go without punching it through the base, let's see if that works for the slide for the more basic one. I haven't done it like this before, so we're gonna we're gonna learn together. All right, we'll find out a bit later. All right, let's continue with the big block. Um, it's up to you if you want to mark it out on the long grain side or the short grain side. Depends if you want end grain or the long grain. Totally up to you, it doesn't matter either way. Um, it's easier to draw on these sides than the ends. So let's run with this. So a piece of timber, it is, please use the plans. Um, it should be 24 wide. Height wise, I've got 19. Just check, depending on what your timber comes in at, this one's actually 18, so please take note. Whatever you're using, that's, that's the key. So I'm gonna mark out 24 by 18. Super important, because we're on the mortar seam in particular, is that it's super accurate on both sides. I need it on both sides. When we use the mortar saw, the mortar saw can't punch out that depth. And even if it could, normally it would punch out, it busts out the back of it real kind of, looks pretty shabby. So I need it perfect that side, perfect that side. Sharp pencil people. So, um, you can rock out a bit. The marking out's not hard. I normally find the center points and then do all my measurements out from there. So rock out people. I think that's all we need. Now we're going to head across to the mortar stuff. It's one of those pieces of kits a lot of people haven't heard of, but if you've got one, geez, it's handy. Good excuse to maybe buy something for yourself. All right, cool kids. This is a mortise machine. Basically, it's a vertical drill press that punches out Square holes, simple as that. It's got special mortise a bit. I'll grab one out. Uh, they come in bunches of sizes. Basically, it's a drill bit, special drill bit, with a nice square kind of, I don't 
know what you call it, square chisel. And uh, in conjunction with each other, they work really well. Come in a variety of sizes. And um, if your school hasn't got one, yeah, talk your, talk your boss into it. Uh, I rate it highly. We use it all the time. We've got three of them. Sorry, that sounded like bragging. But we use them all the time. Because you guys deserve it, here's my cracking dad joke. Where do bad rainbows go? They go to prism. <laughs> and it's a light sentence. <laughs> All right. Feedback if you want. Let's go back into it. All right, first thing I've done is I've set the depth to stop. It's got to stop a bit, a bit past halfway, but nowhere near the bottom. So that'll work well. I've checked it and it's marked out perfect. Mirror image on both sides. And I'll zoom out just a smidge. These two wheels here, that's my left right. This is my forward and backward. So, because you've done a cracking job marking out, I want you to take your time with the wheels. Make sure you line it up perfect. Um, oh, and this clamps it in for us. So, everything's in the center. The base is clean. No point doing it if there's lots of, lots of junk on the base and it doesn't end up flat. If it's not flat, it won't be vertical. Clamp it up nice and tight. Now you can use your wheels to align it. Be real fussy with this bit. That looks pretty good. This is one of those ones you do need your PPE because it's crazy noisy. Alright, you guys rock out. Alright, to finish this last bit off, depending on how well you've done on the mortar saw, Ideally, it's a tiny bit tight. So you're going to use a combo of the files and the chisels. So you might be able to see, obviously it's going to be hard for you guys, see if there's anything not quite perfectly lined up. So usually it's just a little bit of file work. Might be a tiny bit with the chisel. Shouldn't take too long. If you get it to this point, where it works, but it's still a tiny bit tight, I would just sand a little bit off two faces of this. Just make sure you keep everything nice and square. But While you're at it, give this just a final sand. It's up to you. You can take a little bit of a, maybe a chamfer, a little 45 off the edge. Um, I'm a bit of a fan of that. So I might quickly go chamfer that. I like how this slides. Lolly's gonna fall out of that. And then we'll work out this part. All right. Let's go, I'm gonna go sand a little bit. Nothing too exciting, I'll be back. 
All right, the next bit. We're going to do the scoop. Uh, super easy. And I'm, I'm going to show you how I, I do it as a teacher for a class. But the marking out's the same for both. So on the plans, it's 45 from the edge and it's 40 in between. So what we want. So do your 45. Do your 40. And mark halfway. This halfway mark is the key. And as for how, how far down you go, it's totally up to you. Obviously, the deeper it is, the more lollies we're going to get. But please don't thin this out too far, or it becomes a weak point. So I reckon if it's about five or six mil, you'll be sweet. Same on this. Five or six mil. So those two lines, are, they're the important ones. Now, for the teachers out there, we do get a lot of teachers using um, the channel, which is exactly what I'm after. This is the block we kind of use so I can use it safely in the drill press. So, the idea is, they've got it marked out. That's where the bottom of it has to go. That line there suits the larger Forstner bit. So if I line up my Forstner bit with this line and make sure I'm hitting those three marks, this is in the center, you need to give yourself a line straight up. Make sure you clamp it exactly like that with the vise. Line that up, and you'll be able to get yourself a beautiful hollowed out section. So I'm going to show you how to do that on the drill press. Um, this isn't what I would do if I only had one I was doing. I'd be real tempted to draw myself a curve cut it out on the bandsaw as best I could and file the rest. If I didn't have a bandsaw, you can cut yourself a wedge, file the rest. As long as you just give yourself a good guideline on both sides, you'll be right. So, let's head over to the drill press. I'll show you how this one works. This is the safest, easiest way to do it, especially if you've got a class. All right, teachers out there, or if you're doing a bunch of them, this is the kind of safest, uh, I think the easiest way to do it. So, the wedge that I've cut out is the exact size of our slide. It has to be, so when I clamp down on it, everything grabs and everything holds on nice and tight. And then that line there is my guide for the center point of my Forstner bit. So my Forstner bit starts there and it will end there exactly where I want the kind of the bottom of the scoop to be. Um, be real fussy sorting this part out. I've set the drill press up so it's going to smash through here and it's going to finish somewhere down here. And if I forget to mention it, as the kids use it, obviously you can only do kind of one hole there, the next one there, 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 there. And that's what I've done on both sides. So the, the, the kids could use this side as well. So let's go. That's what we're after. It's nice on the top edge, nice on the bottom edge, and it's nice and even all the way through it. So I'm very happy with that one. Let's do the other one. So this one's a bit taller because this is the, uh, the simpler version. So if you were doing lots of the simpler one, please adjust your height accordingly so it's flush. So these are my little dowels. I think they're um, 8mm dowel. I've got a drill bit to suit. 
He's one of these, these Brad Point ones. I keep calling them Brad Point. God, I hope that's what they're called. Um, super accurate, much better. Only thing I want you to consider when you're lining up where these have to go is please make sure your hollowed out section is exactly where you want it. So it's in the center of our hole. Uh, doesn't matter if you put the dowels on top or on the side. So I'm going to mark the center of this one about there. And I'll just do the same on the other side. So I like it there, and I'm going on the opposite side. There. Mark your halfway. Mark your halfway. So, it should look something like that. That'd be perfect. That suits that one. For this guy, same theory. Make sure you like where it's going to go. Is that, is that a better way to see it? So that's in the center, that would be in the center. So I want my timber down to go about there. So the center of that's going to be about here. Which in theory, it should be the same as the other one. Not super critical on this side, but it is on this side. Now this one, I think I'm actually starting to like this idea. Same deal, but you've got to be more accurate. So make sure you like where your blocks are, line your top up, make sure you like where that is, and you'll be able to see inside it that you need to match the holes. So make sure you match those two holes up. Pretty good. I'm going to go about there. About there. The only way I've seen kids get this wrong in the past is if um, I don't think they do. Because even if you get your dow off, if you've got your dow somehow too far in from the edge and you miss the hole. So if you've missed that somehow, but you'd have to be way out. Um, find the center. And I'm always a fan of giving yourself a little center punch. So just use a screw or a center punch. If I'm only going to drill holes into these, they're only going to be about 5 mil or so. Um, it's a nice tight fit. You can glue it if you want. Uh, they can stay. These go. Alright, let's head over. So all I've done is adjust the depth. So we're going to go in about 6 mil. Um, that's it. So by all means, you can glue one into all of them as soon as you want. Please don't glue two without putting it together. Let's have a look. So all I really want to make sure of is that my scoop lines up with the hole where my dowel is in. So that's going to be perfect. This is nicely sanded. It's pretty much finished. I'd, be, I'd happily glue them in now. Now with this guy. So now, we're at the point where we can start gluing this together. My first job is to glue that together. Make sure it's schmick. I would be tempted to glue it in with my slide there. 
glue it, make sure you're happy with how it lines up, make sure there's no glue anywhere. Give it, I don't know, 10 minutes, then I would attach the top. It's up to you to consider if you want all the end grain at one end, if you want a bit of variety. You guys can make that decision. I think that's what I'll run with. Once that's nice and glued, then I'm going to decide which one of these I actually want to use. So, let's get a little bit of gluing done. Alright, let's glue it. You don't need a huge amount of glue at all. The wood glue is pretty strong, it's just PVA. use a huge amount, it's just more cleaning up you got. So, again, please make sure you glue it together. Please make sure anything you ever glue, I've said it a thousand times at school, make sure you're happy to leave that for half an hour, walk away, and that's exactly how it glues up. So with these, I actually think we're clever enough not to worry about any nails. But I want you to be fussy. Make sure your edges are perfect. Make sure you don't have any glue in that edge, on the inside edge. Same deal, you've got to be happy to walk away from it. I like how that fits. And I like the groove through the centre. There's no glue to get in the way. So, and I've got, I pushed it down a little bit, so that should be right. So I'm going to leave that for, I might leave it for 20 minutes. Go grab a cuppa. God, it must be nearly time for a dad joke too. All right. I'm going to leave that for 10, 20. I'm going to go get me a cracking dad joke. It's going to blow your mind. And because um, we're in no rush, then I'm going to glue that guy on. Now your favourite part, dad joke time. What did the sushi say to the bee? Wasabi! Yeah. All right, let's go back into it. We've got glue enough to finish. Before you glue the top on, just check that you're happy. I'd also check that this is a tiny bit below these two. No big if it's still a tiny bit, because we're going to glue this on. Make sure it's perfect. And we're going to give that 20 minutes. Just make sure there's no glue on the inside of it. Make sure you match your grains up. Have a little look.
Easy. While we wait for that to dry, I'm going to show you guys how we attach the, uh, the jar. This one's ready to go. Where's our lid? Oh, it's on. Alright, there's nothing particularly clever about it. This lid's just got two screws, two, three. The only thing you've got to be really careful of is please don't put your screws through where the slide is. I've had kids do that in the past and um, depending on the length of your screw, pretty much you'll screw this, you'll screw it in, this, in one position. So let's go with two. I'm just using little countersunk flats, little drill bit. So it's the same technique for both. So use a bit of scrap. You're okay to eyeball it as long as you're um, opposite. Don't hang on to these too tight because you can crush them. There's not much to them. So make sure you're opposite. That'll be perfect. So please make sure you're opposite. Don't do it like that. Make sure you're nice and centered. That looks pretty good. Now you can use a cordless or a screwdriver. Don't do it too tight until you put the second one in. Make sure you're nice and centered. That's it. What do you guys reckon? Now, using the magic of TV, when I click my fingers, that one's going to be ready to go. Dried and fast forwarded about 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> Told you I was clever. So, Beautiful, happy with that. Now this one, these two options. Uh, obviously I haven't glued these in yet because I'm not sure which one you should go with. This one works well, works beautifully. Actually I don't mind that. both work fine. Totally up to you. Whichever one you want to do. 
that's obviously easier. And um, you get your two or three candies each time. So I reckon either option would be perfect. So, um, actually, I, I reckon I'd actually run with that one. Um, it's a bit easier. Oh, it's a fair bit easier. And works just as well. Oh, my hot tip is you have to use hard candies. Little Skittles, little mints um, are perfect. Has to be hard candies. Obviously, it can't be anything squishy or anything too big. Little jelly beans work well, the bigger jelly beans don't. If you've got to imagine, it's got to fit into our slides. So, Joe, whatever one you run with, um, go nuts. I'd love it. Shoot me some emails, send me some pictures. I'd love to see what your classes get up to, or you guys at home, or. Um, Parents homeschooling their kids. Show me what you, yeah, um, show me what your kids can get up to. Well, I think that wraps up an awesome session in the workshop. You guys have done fantastic. Um, please don't forget, share what Sawdust and Chrome is up to. Click all the like, subscribes. Um, let's grow our family. Um, I really appreciate it that uh, we're getting better and better. Please, happy for some feedback too. What we can do better, what you love about the channel, and um, project ideas. I'd love to hear from you guys. So, hopefully you've got an awesome project, you learnt some new skills, maybe jagged a few tools, because uh, we all deserve it. I think that's it. Oh, I want to give one of these away. So whoever gives me the best comment, um, who I can tell is proactively kind of trying to grow our family, um, I want to send one of these out to you. So um, share the love and I'll share it back to you. That's it, let's go. Tell me there's not a better way to end an awesome day in the workshop or at school than... Ah, come on. I'm sure it's now your favourite part, dad joke time. Oh, and now I've forgotten. <coughs> Sorry. So uh, I think that's, that's fantastic. Um, make sure you're spreading the love, sawdust and chrome. Um, the clicks, yeah.